Hello, welcome back. Uh, I'm actually gonna start a new series. This one is gonna be kind of over backpacking gear. And the reason that I feel like that is kind of a, a good transition is anybody who does like any type of preparing, prepper, tactical, anything, um, is probably run across some backpacking gear along the way because both for travel and backpacking, a lot of the gear has a lot of crossover. And when I travel, I like to carry certain items on both, not just the normal toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, and all that stuff, but like a cup, spoon, knife, fork, if possible, um, maybe a, a plate or bowl, a compact something, just because when you're traveling, you don't want to use plastic wear, you don't want to use, um, you know, toss stuff that you have to throw away all the time, plastic water bottles, all that stuff. So today I'm actually going to go over some of my I'm going to say backpacking slash travel cook stuff. Um, it's definitely more geared towards backpacking, but uh, I have carried a lot of this or a few of these pieces at least for just normal travel stuff so that I have, you know, wares with me. Um, so I'm going to first kind of dive in with pots and pans. I would say my go-to kind of pot setup is going to be this one. It's a titanium pot. It's got the little bale. Um, it's an 1100 milliliter pot. It's got butterfly handles, a lid with kind of a pasta spout or a drain spout. Uh, I like this one because it's pretty good sized. I can use it as a cup, as a pot, um, and titanium is super lightweight. And this one's actually quite durable from a company called Blue. Um, you can find a lot of generic brands that do very good work. Uh, same kind of quality as Tokes. So, and inside here, I keep a couple of different things. The first is the bandana, and I use the bandana just to house my stove, uh, a little scrubby for the pad, and then a lighter for the stove. Um, I do not typically house my fuel can inside here, just because in the past... Um, I've actually had it rust on me. This is just a little titanium BRS stove. Uh, if you've ever seen any backpacking gear videos, um, you definitely recognize this stove as every ultralight backpacker on planet Earth has one. But it's popular for a reason. It's really, really lightweight. It works really well. The only thing is it doesn't have a regulator, so um, it's hit or miss in altitude and or cold. But Really nice, really compact, really light. And for my use cases, you know, it's it's perfect. It just packs up to nothing. So, and then just big and all that. Um, the only other thing that I keep in here is I actually have one of those folder cups here. So this is one of those Swedish folder cups. Uh, I can use it as a small plate or a bowl, but also as a cup, very lightweight. You can kind of see some information there um, from Wildo, Sweden, Boulder Cup. Um, these are really lightweight, flexible, heat resistant, easy to hold and handle. You can either kind of just hook your finger under it like this and use it as a bowl. You can use it as a cup like this. Um, very nice. This one, of course, is the, the larger 600 milliliter. They do have a couple of different sizes on this, but um, I like to use this in here because I can use it for snacks. So I've done like a, you know, trail mix or something, but also coffee as well as soup. Um, but that fits like, I mean, satisfyingly well there at the bottom. So then I wrap all this up, toss it in there. And that's my, that's my go-to, my kit. I do have some alternate uh, options though. In the cup category, I actually have this um, I believe it's a Sea to Summit folding cup. Yep, Sea to Summit folding cup. This is their larger bowl cup. Um, I usually use this for coffee, but it's a little less structured than the other uh, cup, and it kind of feels topsy-turvy when there's liquids in it even. Um, the good thing about this, though, is it does have measuring units in there, which is really, really nice. Uh, I've not had any issues with this. Some people say that the the little folds will crack and break, but I've had this for, I don't know, I would say five years, maybe more. And this was my go-to until I got that Folda cup. Um, 
I've never had any issues with it. No issues with hot water in it, nothing like that. It folds real flat. Folded cup is just lighter, and I like that it's a little bit more solid. Uh, nothing against this, great cup, um, but once I started using that, I just haven't gone back. So, the other one that I have is this MSR. Um, I like this one because it locks. Oh, you can see me. Nice polished paint, uh, pot. I like this because it locks, so I can actually use this when traveling for leftovers um, as a kind of a takeout thing. It's just a, a nice pot with lid. Uh, stainless steel. This is not titanium. This is stainless steel, which uh, if I'm going to be using it all the time, I actually prefer stainless. It just feels way more durable. In fact, I actually use one of my um, camping pots in the kitchen. So there's a Stanley camping pot that I use. I use it in the kitchen all the time. Uh, but like I said, I like this one because it's lockable, it doesn't rattle, and it's really, really good sized. Hello. And it has a nice polish on it, um, which, is, which is great. I also have this really kind of, it's a smaller plate. Um, this is from Tokes as well. It's a plate skillet. I guess they advertise it as a plate, but I've used it as a skillet. Really the only issue I have with this is it's so flexible. It's no, this is no longer even straight. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's almost like <laughs> taco bent on me. Um, but I guess if I really tried, I could probably bend it back in place. It's nice to just have a place to be able to set stuff. Um, I usually will pair this with one of the two pots. Uh, in my backpack because it weighs nearly nothing. Um, but usually I, I love to make bread. So usually if I'm going to do bread by a campfire, I'll try and bake it in this or uh, bake it right on a stone or a grill and then put it on this so I have something to set it on and then kind of eat my soup or whatever out of my, my pot. Um, because it's so lightweight it, and it kind of nests really well with this, um, this is a good pairing. This certainly isn't going to be an ultralight setup because of this. Does this is not ultralight? This is quite heavy, but together, if I'm doing anything long term or car camping, I really like this because it's compact. Um, I also have a pot grabber for this, uh, but I don't have that uh, in this video. The other thing I actually have is um, a camp uh, not skillet kettle. This is from GSI Outdoors. I actually bought this while traveling in Colorado. Uh, the reason I like this is it's all anodized aluminum. It's ultra lightweight, but it comes with a bowl, an insulated cup. So there's your plastic bowl, insulated cup with lid and ultra light will travel spark. Um, I actually use this not only as a, a kettle, but also as a bowl. So I'll use this as a normal pot. The only issue is it's kind of hard to clean compared to the other pots because it's got these rivets in this hole. Um, and I don't know, it's just not as convenient in my opinion. And it, you can only fill it to this much. So you really don't have a much very big pot because it'll start to spill out here. So if you're trying to make a soup, uh, both of those other ones are gonna be better. But for something small, this will work. I'm not exactly sure how big this is. I think it's maybe six or 800. Um, this is the Halilite Kettleist. Um, I use this quite a bit actually. So I drink a lot of coffee and this was a good, good little uh, investment. And it's got everything all in one system. I usually don't go for the all in one, uh, kind of like Boy Scout style systems, but this one was really well done. And believe it or not, these are really durable. Uh, I was a little worried about these uh, little plastic bowls and cups because they're kind of slim and soft, but they're really, really durable and comfortable. Um, I usually will put oatmeal in here, in here and then coffee in here. Um, and I, This I try to dedicate to just boiling water, but I do use it as a pot. So that's my an alternate. Um, little camp setup. If I'm just going by myself, this works well. The other ones I can actually use for two people. Uh, some honorable mention stuff is like uh, an, a couple of other stove options that I have. This one is one of those kind of Esprit military stoves. Um, 
I actually have a used bundle here. You can see how the cellophane is old. Uh, this is fine. These work really well, uh, although they smell really bad. Um, if I was going to do a non kind of uh, canister stove, this wouldn't be my pick. This would be my third option um, for a couple of reasons. One, these are actually pretty expensive and you can, you can go through two or three of those cubes just to make one meal. And at the price they are, they're not really budget friendly. Uh, although I've had this for probably 12 years. Uh, so it does work out really well. Used it a handful of times, uh, but it's not my go-to. But it's nice to have as a backup. I may even put this in my uh, bug out bag at some point if I ever remake one officially. The other thing I do have is kind of going back to an alternate canister stove is I actually in this old pill box or bottle, I have the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. So compared to the BRS stove, this is actually huge, but this has been awesome. It's also, this does have a fuel regulator, so it works consistently in high elevations, cold temperatures, hot temperatures, all of that. Um, this thing is a tank. I have nothing bad to say about this. I literally have nothing bad. The only reason I pick the BRS stove is typically if I'm backpacking, it's in pretty temperate weather and I don't need a regulator. But if I was going to do a lot of maybe mountain uh, hiking where elevation and temperature might be a factor, I'm going to pick this over the BRS stove because this thing is just amazing. I've had this for a lot of years. I put it through a lot of use um, and never had it fail. So nothing bad to say about this. It's been great. Uh, and keeping it in this kind of old pill container is just perfect. Gives it a lot of protection, lightweight. So I like that a lot. The other stove option that I really like, and I'm actually using more and more, is alcohol stove. So um, this is just a brass alcohol stove. You dump your alcohol in here. Typically I use one and a half to two ounces of alcohol for a meal. Um, and you can store it in this, which is nice. So that's watertight. You store it in here and you just basically either take a lighter and light it or you spark it with a uh, ferro rod and it goes up like crazy. I can actually still, still smell fuel in there, um, although there isn't any. Uh, this would be how you put it out. So you would just take this. You can either put it out that way. Of course, you take the top off. So assume it's burning. <laughs> That's a French reference. Uh, rock, paper, scissor. Uh, anyway, assume it's burning. You can either put it out, snuff it out like that, or you can use this as a simmering. And you can limit the amount of flames that are coming out. Um, I've never used that for simmering. I've literally only ever used it to, to put the flame out. I have no reason to do a small fire like that. Uh, typically, again, I'm cooking, or I'm boiling water, not cooking, so I have no need to limit it. I really like alcohol stoves. I didn't think I was going to, um, but if I'm going for a night or two, I may just fill this up and take that versus taking a whole canister and not knowing how much fuel you have or whatever. The other addition um, is this little thing here. I don't know what brand this is, but I'll send. A, I'll put a link in the description. So this um, is so that you can put your pot on top. So if you have your your stove going, you just kind of slip those two together. That's a little tough. Slip those two together and you set it on top, and that way you have a stable spot to put. A pot. It's very, very stable. Um, there is some added danger to a stove like this, though. If you spill it, and let's say if you're cooking your vestibule, you spill it, you can actually you know, burn your tent. Um, but there's a lot of upsides as well. As long as you're careful, I think this is an entirely viable uh, option. And there's a lot of different fuels you can burn. Some people say heat, um, which I would use as a backup, but I prefer not to. Uh, but denatured alcohol of any kind, or even regular rubbing alcohol I've used in this before. It's not as efficient, but it does work. And you can find fuel pretty much anywhere. Denatured alcohol at any Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot. Uh, the good thing about heat is it's available at gas stations along the way. So, A couple of other items that I, I dedicate to, I would say, my, my cookware. I do have some utensils. Um, 
classic polished bowl, long handled spoon. This is my go-to uh, backpacking spoon. It's so lightweight, it's so durable, and it's kind of got a flat surface so you can really get the bottom scrape. You can almost use it as a spatula if you need to. Uh, really love this thing. I've had this for a long time as well. It used to be my, my daily driver, even at home in my kitchen. I would use this as my only utensil. Um, that was until I got the one that you saw in my, my fanny pack video, my EDC video. This is the German military one. Um, this is way heavier, but it's a little bit more complete in its utility, and I really like how big the spoon is on this. So if you want to check that out, you can go see it a little bit more detail in my uh, EDC fanny pack video because I do carry this with me everywhere I go. Um, I even travel with this. However, I take this the, the knife out when I travel typically. Um, one other utensil is I have this tiny spatula that I like to bring. Um, it just makes cooking a little easier, especially if I'm doing any cast iron or fried foods, even bread, being able to flip the bread a lot easier. I can flip bread with a spoon or a fork, but having a super lightweight metal spatula like this is really, really nice. And you may recognize this if you are in the outdoor YouTube space because there is a YouTuber I watched, Matthew Poza. <laughs> He's the one who turned me on to this. Um, and honestly, it's so nice. It's so good. I see why he loves them so much. Um, so I picked, I picked them up. They actually come in a pack of two, one with slots, one without. My wife uses the one without, and I have the one with slots. The last piece of kitchen utensil that I use for either a cutting board, a plate, um, or a, a small bowl-ish is this um, snap fold dish. So I, this is so lightweight. I usually use it to just bring this a cutting board. But if you snap these together, you can actually use them or use it as a kind of a high, a low sided bowl or a plate with a little bit of sides. So if you're doing pasta or something, you can pretty easily contain it in here. It's a good size, but I typically will just use this for a cutting board because it's so lightweight and flexible. It folds flat. I had the bowl and cup uh, that goes along with this. But the cup, since I used it most often, it actually ended up cracking on one of the edges. Um, and that was my fault. It may have lasted a little bit longer, but I accidentally folded it backwards. <clears throat> so instead of going this way, I kind of like folded it in a weird way backwards like this. Um, I don't know. I kind of folded it inside out and it was not, that's not how it's supposed to go. So a little bit on me, but I feel like if you're going to have an origami style plate. It should be able to withstand that maybe. Um, but this is, the, this is the only one that survived. Um, the bowl, I just didn't use. So actually I got rid of that one. And that's it. So uh, like I said, most of this is more category, categorized as camp. But if we do any overlanding or travel, uh, I carry something of this nature with me anyway. Because having this or something to, to take food away in without waste is nice if i'm just traveling this is my go-to i may even toss this inside to have a cup for coffee and stuff because you never know when you're not going to have utensils or a bowl or a plate so yeah uh, if any of this stuff interests you i'll actually try and have links to my amazon affiliate in the description box Amazon Affiliates doesn't pay a lot, but it does help me a little bit get more gear if you guys use that and want to support me in any way. Um, it's helpful. It's certainly not a standalone <laughs> standalone income by any means. Uh, but, you know, if you want some of this, it doesn't cost you guys anything extra, and you can certainly use those links to help me out a little bit. Pennies on the dollar, but anything works just to show support. Um, anyways, if you got any questions on any of this stuff, let me know. Um, I've got a lot more coming up for in terms of camping gear, so look out for that. If you like backpacking, travel stuff, um, military surplus, which I love, knives, multi-tools, tools, handyman stuff, uh, I will cover tons of that as I go down uh, down the line on this, this YouTube thing, so feel free to subscribe. Um, and if there's any specific video that you would like to see, maybe a deeper dive into something, or my thoughts on any particular thing, um, and I'm able to provide in-depth inf informational inf uh, videos, I will do that too. So thank you again for joining me and have a good day.